Welcome to the Good News Ride Home for Monday, July 20th, 2020. I'm Jackson Bird. Scientists accidentally created a new fish. Whoops. Iceland is broadcasting the world's screams from their fjords. KFC is working with Russia to 3D bioprint chicken nuggets. And because we need a dose of normal in all these bizarre headlines, I've also got some Zoom tips and tricks to make your conference calls a little less painful. Here are some of the cool things from the news today. Scientists have accidentally created a new fish hybrid. While trying to induce a form of asexual reproduction to help the fish they were studying breed in captivity, a response to the diminishing numbers caused by overfishing and pollution, Hungarian scientists accidentally created offspring from the American paddlefish and the Russian sturgeon. And the internet is calling the hundreds of resulting offspring sturtlefish. We never wanted to play around with hybridization. It was absolutely unintentional, said Attila Mozar, a senior research fellow at the Research Institute for Fisheries and Aquaculture in Hungary and a co-author of the study. Quoting the New York Times, Both the paddlefish and the sturgeon are known as fossil fish because of their ancient lineage. Their last common ancestor swam during the age of the dinosaurs, and the two have been evolving independently on opposite sides of the planet for over 184 million years, which makes them nearly twice as evolutionarily diverged as humans and mice. That led scientists to assume that they were too evolutionarily diverged to be hybridized. The sturtlefish created in Hungary exhibited traits from both species. Although all have their mother's mouth and carnivorous appetite, some have their father's fins and snout, though slightly smaller. And after conducting DNA analysis on eight sturtlefish, the researchers were able to separate the hybrids into two groups. Some of these sturtlefish got a double dose of DNA from their mother and looked far more like sturgeon than paddlefish. The others received nearly equal amounts of maternal and paternal DNA and looked like a perfect mashup of the two species. End quote. Despite the vast differences in their evolution, sturgeons and paddlefish do have a few things in common. They are both among the largest, slowest growing, and longest living freshwater fish on the planet, and they are both among the most endangered. Which is why the team at the Research Institute for Fisheries and Aquaculture in Hungary was trying to help them populate by breeding in captivity and experimenting with gynogenesis, a type of asexual reproduction. The fact that they were able to reproduce might mean that they have even more in common than previously thought, though. Quoting again, Although it seems unlikely that two species would have so much in common after spending ages evolving independently, 184 million years isn't actually that long for these fish. These living fossil fishes have extremely slow evolutionary rates, so what might seem like a long time to us isn't quite as long of a time to them, Dr. Solomon David, an aquatic ecologist at Nickel State University in Louisiana, said, end quote. Dr. Mozart and his team say they will continue caring for the hundred or so remaining living sturtlefish, but have no plans to create more of them. Like most human-made hybrids, such as mules and ligers, they assume that the sturtlefish are sterile. Every nation's tourism board has been scrambling to keep their industry afloat, especially nations whose economies rely strongly on tourism. Some are offering to pay tourists medical bills if they get sick while traveling to their country. Others are focusing on domestic tourism, encouraging residents to visit the sites that are usually crawling with international tourists. On the domestic side of things, over in the UK, they recently started an initiative to encourage people to go back to restaurants by literally sending them a rebate for half of their meal, up to £10 per person. The campaign is called Eat Out to Help Out. And that's all I have to say about that. Anyways, Iceland has recently come up with a new initiative that only Iceland could have come up with. It's called Let It Out. Promote Iceland is inviting people to record themselves screaming on their website, and then the organization is taking a big yellow speaker to beloved remote sites around the nation and playing the screams on the speaker in the wide open spaces, which you can then view back on their website. As the website says, You've been through a lot this year, and it looks like you need the perfect place to let your frustrations out. Somewhere big, vast, and untouched. It looks like you need Iceland. Record your scream and we'll release it in Iceland's beautiful, wide-open spaces. And when you're ready, come let it out for real. You'll feel better. We promise. 
end quote. Promote Iceland's tourism program director, whose name I am not even going to try to pronounce, apologies, said, We want to draw prospective tourists' attention to the fact that it's relatively safe to travel to Iceland, and that here you can experience beautiful nature without crowds, which is something that we think people will seek out when interest in travel increases again. It's important to draw attention to Iceland's advantages now. People are dreaming about the time when it will be possible to travel again and even planning trips in the near future. We want to be a part of that conversation. End quote. And even before you may be able to visit, it's certainly fun to both submit your own scream to release some of that stress and click through the website to hear other people's screams while enjoying high-res photos and videos of various sites around Iceland, all of which are helpfully labeled so you can bookmark them when you do eventually visit. Let It Out's website also has some information on the therapeutic benefits of screaming, from Zoe Aston, a therapist and mental health consultant. She says, quote, Screaming as a therapeutic tool was developed in the 1970s as a way to release pent-up emotion. What we don't realize is that the psychological response to wanting to scream lights up a part of our brains called the amygdala. The amygdala activates when we are under threat, something we have all experienced in the past few months. And part of the beneficial effect of screaming comes from being able to make a loud noise into a wide open, undisturbed space. This literally allows your amygdala to release the stress stored there and move forward. End quote. So, let it go. Or, out, I suppose it's called. Let it out, virtually, for now, and maybe add Iceland to your post-pandemic travel list. I went a few years back, and I can guarantee it is both otherworldly stunning, and a great place to experience solitude. We may be staying home as much as possible, but the summer season isn't on hold and getting fit for the summer shouldn't be either. Fortunately, you can get access to professional training from the comfort of your home with Beachbody On Demand. Thousands have joined Beachbody On Demand to stay fit during the COVID-19 lockdown, and they weren't disappointed. With Beachbody On Demand, you can get access to over 1,300 workouts that you can stream anytime to fit your own schedule at home. Want to grab a quick workout in between virtual meetings? No problem. Beachbody On Demand has workouts as short as 10 minutes that don't require extra equipment. In the time it would have taken you to drive and park at the gym, you can be finished working out right in your home. And Beachbody On Demand has hundreds of effective workouts for all fitness levels, including bodybuilding, weight training, cardio, HIIT, yoga, and even dance workouts. I tried the Morning Meltdown 100, and I couldn't believe how much more I was motivated to do with the trainer Jericho McMatthews' encouragement and the pumping music from the DJ. If your workout is feeling stale or you have trouble being motivated on your own, Beachbody On Demand will help you try something new and stick with it. And listeners of The Good News Ride Home can get a special free trial membership by texting good news to 303030 you'll get full access to the entire platform all the workouts nutrition information and support absolutely free just text good news to 303030 imagine this a convenient tabletop device that gives complete lab grade blood count results in minutes with nothing but a small prick and two drops of blood No more having to draw vials of blood only to wait days for critical test results. Today, you can invest in site diagnostics and the future of easier, faster blood testing at OurCrowd.com. Doctors rely on complete blood count tests to make accurate diagnoses, but they're often forced to postpone critical medical treatment while waiting for test results. Site Diagnostics explains that their solution combines rapid scanning microscopic technology with computer vision and artificial intelligence to deliver results within minutes, not days. Site's technology is the first of its kind cleared by the FDA for moderate complexity lab settings. Our crowd is investing in the important medical innovation work Site is doing and has made it so accredited investors can join them and invest too. Our Crowd's crowdsourced investing platform gives accredited investors access to early-stage funding rounds in some of the most promising companies around the world. 
So now you can set up your Our Crowd account for free and invest in pre-IPO companies alongside professional venture capitalists. Learn more about investing in site diagnostics at info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. Setting up your account is free. Get started right now at info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. Again, that is info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. As many of us spend more and more time on Zoom calls, we're starting to get more familiar with the largely unintuitive platform. You may have discovered a few tips and tricks here and there on your own, but in case you are looking to up your game even more, you know, make your experience more streamlined, maybe impress your coworkers, here are a few more tips courtesy of Mental Floss. One of my personal favorites is holding down the space bar to unmute myself quickly. You know, the standard practice for most calls that I attend is to mute yourself unless you're speaking. But this can lead to many people forgoing their usual smaller comments that make ordinary meetings and conversations more lively and pleasant, because anytime you want to offer a quick note of agreement or whatever, you have to find your mouse again and hit the mute button. It usually just seems like too much to be worth it. But no more! If you were already on mute, just hold your space bar down while you add a quick comment and then lift it up again to go back to being on mute. Bonus, it kind of feels like you're using a walkie-talkie. And if you like to make sure that other people are using video as well before you join in with your video automatically on, you can adjust that in your Zoom settings. Under the Video tab, just tick Turn Off My Video when joining a meeting. And you can also do the same thing in the Audio tab of Settings to be automatically muted when you join. And of course, you can manually turn the camera and microphone on after you have joined the call and gotten a sense for what everyone else on the call is doing. And besides the spacebar, there are a bunch of actual keyboard shortcuts baked into Zoom, and you can customize your own. If you want to unmute without holding the spacebar down, you can just press Shift-Command-A on a Mac or Alt-A on Windows to toggle the mute button. There's a whole bunch of other keyboard shortcuts for things like screen sharing, scheduling a meeting, muting other people, and more. And you can find a key for all of those under the Keyboard Shortcuts tab in your Zoom settings, where you can also customize them and enable them to work even when you're not in the Zoom app or tab. If you have it running in the background but want to check on a Google Doc or something like that and you want to still be able to unmute yourself quickly, just tick the Enable Global Shortcut option in your settings. Now, if there are a lot of other people joining via phone or who have their video otherwise turned off and say you're maybe on a big call where you're trying to see the people on video better, you can hide the people without video to make those with video appear a bit bigger in the grid. And again, this one is in the video tab of the settings window and you just tick hide non-video participants. Now, this next tip is interesting if you are a part of a group or a company where someone is always inevitably asking, hey, what's the link to the Zoom room again? So if you're usually the one who responds to that person, in your settings under the General tab, you can tick Automatically Copy Invite Link once the meeting starts. So as soon as the meeting begins, the invite URL will automatically be on your clipboard. And as soon as a coworker asks for the link, you've already got it locked and loaded. No hunting for the invite URL required. As Zoom works on catching up with how many people are now using it, I'm sure we will continue seeing more and more features added. And if you want to keep up with some of those features or announcements about how the company is handling its newfound notoriety, I recommend checking out the Tech Meme Ride Home podcast, where Brian McCullough keeps you up to date with all the tech news you need to know every day, including the changing landscape of video conference platforms in our new reality. So, a few weeks ago, I talked about a new startup called Redefine Meat, who are trying to perfect plant-based 3D-printed steaks. Turns out the 3D-printed meat alternative market really is picking up because the latest player in the game is KFC. Yep, KFC is working with the Russian-based 3D bioprinting solutions to try to create the world's first lab-produced chicken nuggets. KFC will provide the lab with their famous 11 herbs and spices as well as the breading and work with the lab to achieve their trademark taste. Unlike popular lab-produced meat alternatives like Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger, it doesn't sound like the KFC nuggets will be vegan or even vegetarian. The process that they describe in the press release does include animal materials. Quoting from KFC's press release, 
3D Bioprinting Solutions is developing additive bioprinting technology using chicken cells and plant material, allowing it to reproduce the taste and texture of chicken meat almost without involving animals in the process. At the moment, there are no other methods available on the market that could allow the creation of such complex products from animal cells. The bioprinting method has several advantages. Bio meat has exactly the same microelements as the original product while excluding various additives that are used in traditional farming and animal husbandry, creating a cleaner, final product. Cell-based meat products are also more ethical. The production process does not cause any harm to animals. Also, according to a study by the American Environmental Science and Technology Journal, the technology of growing meat from cells has minimal negative impact on the environment, allowing energy consumption to be cut by more than half, greenhouse gas emissions to be reduced 25-fold, and 100 times less land to be used than traditional farm-based meat production. End quote. According to The Verge, the bioprinted nuggets will be available for testing this fall, but no word yet on when customers may get to try some. That is all for today. As always, this show is produced by Ride Home Media. Like I said earlier, if you want a daily dose of tech-related news, you can listen to the Tech Meme Ride Home, hosted by Brian McCullough. But I am Jackson Bird. I hope you all had a good weekend and that you have a very good rest of your day. I will talk to you tomorrow.